In the last episode, Kato Kiyomasa, also known as the Demon General, had pushed forward in July towards Horyang, and now had both of the crown princes of Korea. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. After sending both of the Korean princes south to Kyongsong, Kato Kiyomasa took 8,000 of his men backed by 3,000 Korean soldiers that had allied themselves with the Japanese across the Tumen River into Manchuria. Apparently, this was done because Kato Kiyomasa was curious about how the Jurchen people fought. After all, he had heard that the Jurchens were fearsome warriors, and Kato wanted to test that. He also wanted to see how well the Koreans would fight under Japanese command. It didn't take Kato's forces long to come across a border fortress. A chronicler for Kato Kiyomasa said this about the battle. As dawn broke, our men formed up into their individual divisions. As is common in this strange country, Jurchen fortresses are not only enclosed securely in front, but at the rear, they have recourse to high stone walls and mountain recesses. When we saw that it did not appear well defended at all, the Korean volunteers of Horyang went forward while our Japanese forces went around to the mountain at the rear, and groups of 30 to 50 men worked together to pry loose the stones, and the wall collapsed. The battle itself isn't something I've been able to find many details on. What I have been able to find says that the battle was over relatively quickly with the victory for Kato's forces. The Korean forces then withdrew from the area. For the most part, they had proven their loyalty, but also they had farms, businesses, and well, so on to get back to. Besides, they had signed up to go to war with the Jurchens. This dropped Kato's forces to roughly around 8,000. They did apparently try to fix the fortress, but weren't able to fully fix it. You see, within the next day or so, over 10,000 rage Jurchen tribesmen rallied outside the walls of this fortress, with more being rallied in the surrounding areas to attack. The details of the ensuing battle is rather obscure, but it was incredibly bloody, so much so that Kato Kiyomasa ordered all the heads that they had cut off during the last battle and during the current battle to be discarded, as they just simply weighed down his soldiers. The number of these heads was supposedly around 8,000. The fighting did stop, though, when a huge rainstorm rolled in with a strong wind blowing the rain into the faces of the Jurchens. Seeing that this put them at a severe disadvantage, the Jurchens withdrew from the area with the plan to attack after the rainstorms had died down. Now, Kato was definitely brave and aggressive. I would in fact argue that he was the most aggressive of all the Japanese generals. But one thing he wasn't was stupid. The whole purpose of him taking his forces over to Manchuria was to accomplish a few things. One, to see how the Jurchens fought, and two, to see how Koreans under Japanese command would fight. And the last part was probably the most important, as Kato was inc incredibly committed to Toyotomi's Hideyoshi's dream of conquering China, and to do so meant that eventually the Japanese would have to integrate the Koreans into their armies. With all this now accomplished, he 
saw no reason to stay in Manchuria and fight with the Jurchens. And honestly, he was risking his forces every second further that he stayed there. So, before the Jurchens could arrive in greater numbers, he took his men back across the Tumen River and returned to Korea. After this campaign in the far north, Kato would go back to would go back south and take up residence at Ambyon near the border between the provinces of Hamyong and Kangwon. He took both of the Korean princes and whatever officials the princes had with them, well, with him. They would remain with him for the next several months. And that is where I will leave you. But before I go, I'd like to leave you with these pieces of art on Kato Kiyomasa, a lot of which are about Kato Kiyomasa hunting tigers alone with his spear.